This video is going to go over the Capture the Flag sample project. If you haven't downloaded this sample project yet, you can do so from the Behavior Designer Samples webpage. So I've already opened up the scene, and one of the first things you'll notice in the very center of the map is a flag. This flag is going to be defended by six red bots. There are three right here, then there are three patrolling the area around it. The flag is going to try to be captured by the blue bots. There are two of them total, one right here and one right here. The blue bots are going to try to capture the flag at the capture point, which is located right here. The blue bots can move faster than the red bots, so eventually they will be able to capture the flag. Also, these red bots are defending, and they defend the flag by trying to run into the blue bots. As soon as the blue bot or the red bot runs into the blue bot, the blue bot will respawn back to its starting position. So let's go and get into the behavior trees. I'm going to first select this defend one unit, and you can see that it's right here. If I open up Behavior Designer, you can see that it has a pretty basic behavior tree. The very first task that's going to run is this within sight task. This task is going to check to see if any enemies are within sight. The enemies are defined by these two transforms, Offense 1 and Offense 2, which are the blue bots. So if any blue bots are within sight, this task is going to return success, and then this defend task is going to run. This defend task defends it, defends the flag by basically chasing the enemy. So the this task is going to chase the enemy away from the flag. If within sight returns failure, then this seek task is going to run, and this seek task moves the bot back to the starting position. We can take a look at what that position is by clicking on that defend one game object. You can see that it's right here. So when the game first starts, I expect this red bot to move to this position since no blue bots will be within sight of this red bot. Let's go back to that behavior tree so I can explain a few more things about it. When within sight returns success, in addition to returning success, it also sets this target variable. Now this variable called enemy was created within behavior designer and you can see it's of type transform. If we take a look at the code for that task, you can see right here that right before it returns success, we set the target value to whatever object is within sight of the current object. And what this is doing is it's setting the value to either offense one or offense two, and then this defend task will know which object to defend or which object to chase. So you can see this target value right here has the exact same enemy value. They're the same object exactly. So this defend unit will basically know which object is within sight. In addition, I've created two more variables, this move speed and this rotation speed, and that is used by both the defend task and the seek task, and I did that just so that I only have to set the value once. So if I change this move speed from like 6 to 7 or something like that, that new 7 value will be reflected in both the seek task and the defend task because they're both using the exact same variable. So variables in behavior designer is just an easy way to share information between tasks. The next behavior tree that I want to go over is this offense 1 behavior tree. Now the offense 1 unit is located right here. And you can see that he has a little bit more complicated behavior tree set up, but still not too, too bad. So there's two tasks that run at the same time. There's this within distance task, and there's this seek task. They're running at the same time because of this parallel task. The within distance, within distance task will check to see if an enemy is within sight, or is within distance of us. Now, we can... The enemy in this case is the red bots because we are currently selected the blue bot. And the red bots are these six units right here. If an enemy is not within sight, then this bot will continue to seek towards the flag. If an enemy is within distance of us, then this interruption will be performed. We can identify which task that is by clicking on the little eye. And this when this interruption is performed, the seek will stop running. When the seek stops running, it's going to return failure. 
this interruption is going to return failure because this interrupt success is false and this parallel task will thus return failure. Since this is a selector task, the flee task will then run. I have a breakpoint set up, which you'll see in a little bit why I have it set up, but ignore that for right now. The flee task will then basically flee from whatever enemy was, with, was found within distance. So you can see this variable right here, this flee from transform, is set to the same variable called enemy as within distance. They're the exact same. In addition, just like the defend one task or the defend one behavior tree, I created a move speed and a rotation speed just so I don't have to set the values multiple times on the different tasks that should have the exact same value. So the flee task used move speed and rotation speed and the seek task uses move speed and rotation speed. The last behavior tree when the flag has not been taken are, is for this patrol unit. And let's take a look at where that is in the scene. So this patrol one is located right here. And you can see that he just has two action tasks. The first action task will patrol from waypoint to waypoint. The waypoints are set up right here. So you see there's one through four. If I click in the game view, you can see it. One, two, three, four. And if I go back to that unit, the other thing that it's, well, this patrol task does two things. Yeah, it patrols between waypoints, and then it also determines if it sees an enemy. If it sees an enemy defined by these targets, so offense one and offense two, or the blue bots, then again, it's going to set the enemy variable. When it sees an enemy, it's going to return success, and this seek task will run. The seek task will seek towards the enemy, and it gets which enemy to seek towards by this target variable. So let me set that breakpoint back again, and we will watch it run up and to that point. So I'm going to hit play. Make this a little wider. And we'll see the within distance light up because it's checking to see if it's within distance. Oh, it looks like it didn't light up that, or it didn't, it didn't trigger that time. Let me restart the game. Okay, so it took a little bit, but eventually one of the enemies is within distance. And so you can see right here that the flea has been triggered. So let me stop that breakpoint. And in this case, I wonder which one he's fleeing from. It's, he's probably fleeing from this one, so he's going to go in the opposite direction. And he, it's going to look like he's seeking towards the flag, but he's really fleeing. On the other hand, this offense two unit we can see it's still seeking towards the flag. So we'll let it play out just a little bit. Oh, it looked like the, in the case of the offense one, the unit was actually fleeing from this, this red guy, I think. But now, a different behavior tree. So no tasks are lit up right now because a different be behavior tree is being run. On each unit, uh, there are two different behavior trees. There's this one for flag not taken, and then there's one for flag taken. So let me go ahead and show the code that will actually trigger the two. On the actual behavior tree, you see that we have this group value. When the flag is not taken, it has a group of zero. When the flag is taken, right here, it has a group of one. The capture the flag game manager will toggle between the two different groups depending on if the flag is taken. So this trigger, or this function gets called when the flag is taken. It will disable all the behavior trees that are in the flag not taken group, and then it will enable all the behavior trees that are in the flag taken group. So that's kind of how it toggles between the two different behavior trees. Now, what this behavior tree does is the first thing, actually let me make behavior designer a little bit bigger. And we can see that the very first thing that it does is checks to see if the current unit has the flag. If the current unit does have the flag, then it will seek towards the capture point. As soon as it reaches the capture point, it will then celebrate. And it celebrates by turning in circles. If on the other hand, it does not have the flag, then it will seek towards the flag, just to kind of catch up to the flag to help his buddy out if he needs it. Now, at the same time it's being run, 
this branch is being, or at the same time the seek task is being run, this branch is being run. And what this branch does is it checks to see if the flag is captured, and then if the flag is not captured, or if the flag is captured, it's going to interrupt the seek task because the seek no longer needs to seek towards the flag. Now, I'm, sometimes it takes a little bit for the blue guys to actually capture the flag. So while I explain the flag taken behavior tree on the defensive units, I'm going to let it play. So this is the flag taken behavior tree for the defensive units. And you can see that it's pretty basic. The one thing that I want to point out, oh, looks like he's about to capture it. So let me pause that there and let me make this bigger. So this behavior tree, so again, this is on the red bots. This is the red unit or the the defensive units. There's a parallel task that will run that first checks this condition, checks to see if the flag has been captured. If the flag has been captured, then it's going to run this interruption. This interruption is a parent of this seek task, which seeks towards the flag. So the defend units, if the flag is taken, will try moving towards the flag to defend the flag. When this interrupt task gets triggered, it's going to then run this stop behavior task. This stop behavior task completely was not needed at all. It was there just because I kind of wanted to use it to show an example of using it, but it's not really necessary. And basically what it does is it stops this behavior tree from running just because if the flag has been captured, then it no longer needs to run. So all the defend units have the exact same behavior tree set up if the flag has been taken. So it's kind of nice because I only need to explain one. So let's go ahead and look at the offense two unit because it looks like he has a flag. So yes, he has a flag. He's seeking towards the capture point and he looks like he's really close because the capture point's right here. So it looks like he's going to get it. So let's go ahead and let it keep playing. Actually, let me split the view again so we can see this running. And in a second or two, this one's going to light up just because the flag has been captured. So this offense unit is going to start celebrating. So he's celebrating by turning in kind of slow circles. And then this offense one unit, if I go to the flag taken behavior, is also celebrating because his body captured the flag. So they're both turning in circles. And then the game restarts back from the beginning and they do it all over again. So hopefully this video provided a good introduction for how the Capture the Flag sample project works.